Hello everyone, this is Moshe, the Electric Israeli. Thank you for joining my channel. And I have a special guest. Here he is, my good friend, Craig. And Craig is a Tesla Model 3 dual motor owner. And you owned the rear wheel at the beginning. So let's yeah. tell the story because I, I played a little part of it. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, yeah so we have the, uh, I think, got the first one in um, March or March May. 2018 yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and I was waiting for the dual motor which came out sooner than I thought so I sold the uh, so Moshe helped me drove down the the rear wheel drive version to the dealer and we picked up the dual motor version so you got it you got in the same day to drive uh, the two Teslas two Teslas <laughs> both of them to and what happened to the to the first one sold the first one, one. get a good price you know, I uh, w with the uh, tax credit, I made about $1,500. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, I had to give up most of so, it. So, uh, how do you like the dual motor? It's great. It's great. And this, I, I was, you know, a little nervous about the snow, but when the snow hit, no problem it's at all. It's great, huh? It's great. What you, what's your favorite part? Um, you know, you have a lot of confidence in the snow. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's much faster. Maybe it is or not. It's hard to tell. Has the right comfort? Yeah, it's about the same. It's not about the same. It's about the same. I think we should put the car side by side and try <laughs> it. Uh, my, uh, my Tesla is right there next to. But you know what? Uh, this is not the, the only reason I can. I mean, first of all, Craig and I have friends for probably 20 years. His daughters were my students. And uh, Craig has a very interesting business, uh, which uh, supplies uh, components to all over the world and Tesla. So won't you tell us what is it that you do and how is it, how, what's your connection with Tesla? Yeah, so for about eight years or so, we've been supplying equipment for the Tesla factory, mostly to, uh, in the in the chilling, in the chilled water supply for the vehicle, uh, for the motors and the batteries, they need, a, a, in the factory, they need to um, vary the temperature to make sure that these components work over those temperatures. So we've been doing that for about eight years. And then recently in November, they had some trouble at the factory with their vehicle chamber and uh, nobody could fix the uh, computer. So they asked us to replace it. And we, our company makes controllers for test chambers, chillers and uh, vehicle test equipment. Mm -hmm. So we have a uh, oh, 50 or 60 systems in the, in the Fremont factory, as well as a, a lot of equipment in the uh, test lab for the engineering department. Really? So we've been there a few times, yeah. In Fremont? Fremont. Actually, I, I, I've been to the headquarters in Palo Alto, yeah, right. Deer Creek. So there, there was a big introduction uh, the other day for the uh, autonomous autonomous day, autonomous driving. Yeah. The, the robot taxi, also known full full self-drive. Yeah. What, what do you think about that? What's, what's, what's your take? Well, you know, I've designed computer systems for about 20 years and uh, I thought it was very impressive. And I, I watched most of that video. I think it's the real deal. I think that, you know, and, and I told you just before that if it's next year, the year after, 50 years from now, we're gonna know that this was a, an important- Do you think it's a groundbreaking, groundbreaking event? Well, I think it was a, it's a necessity, it was a necessary uh, development that they had to do to push the limit. I think that the, the I think that, you know, Elon Musk is, found ways to make things happen. So you don't want to bet against that. And how, and how is that different than what Google is doing? Well, in, in yeah, autonomy. So, yeah, so we talked about, well, I think, I think uh, Elon Musk is very critical of the LiDAR because it's unreliable. Uh, you know, it's a rotating uh, laser. It's expensive. It, and I don't know how resilient it is against vibration and all that. So I'm not really that sure about that issue, but I suspect that it's less, it, it's a liability if you compare it with just cameras and radar. Mm -hmm. So the LiDAR has a, a, some limitations and, and it, it can't answer all your questions. So eventually you have to get to the, to the uh, camera. Cameras and, and the radar. And, yeah, and so, and, and Tesla is focusing on that because they know that you have to have the cameras in the end. Anyway, um, the LiDAR is sort of a crutch. It is. Yeah. Okay. So, um, 
I, I kind of agree with that. You do. Agree I, I can with that. I can understand that. You do. So uh, I just uh, you know I I teach Bible. <laughs> That's what I do very well. So I don't understand. That's why I rely on Craig all the time. He's, he's the, I do. So in, in layman's term, because I did watch the the presentation as well, I was impressed. I didn't understand ninety percent of mm. the technicalities, but I was impressed with the presentation. So in layman's term, what is full? What do te, what does Tesla use to make full self driving? Like in, in basic terms. Well, I think that, uh, you know, about two two or three years ago, Tesla said we're going to uh, start putting into our cars all the sensors, the whole sensor suite, and all the computers they'll need to do full self-driving. Mm -hmm. They realized, I think, that, you know, after three years, that that wasn't enough computing power. Mm -hmm. So they built a very specialized chip that's uh, optimized for that and one of the things that uh, nvidia says is you know our our chip is just as powerful uh i think that the difference is and the reason why tesla had to do this is because uh they only have allotted uh 100 watts for that mm -hmm. so if you're if you're if you're shooting uh 500 watts into the computer that's less range for the car okay so how okay that was totally my next question so how what's going to be the effect on range what yeah. what if this is engaged well i think that they so one of the things is they want to be able to retrofit this computer into the existing mm -hmm. cars mm -hmm. so they've allocated a certain amount of power for this they have to keep the new computer within that power so uh retrofitting up to the nvidia whatever they call that high-end chip that can do th three three hundred thousand or three three thousand three hundred uh, trillion operations per second is not practical because it requires five times as much power as a computer right. that Tesla's developing. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's an awful, it's uh, seven times more powerful than the computer in terms of frames per second that they're currently able to conduct. And, uh, you know, there was a very interesting article uh, from a financial guy who also has an AI background. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Tesla has that nobody else has is, you know, a hundred million miles of actual data. data. Real world data that they can train the neural network with. I mean, then that's a, that's a, So you think they're gonna, you think they're gonna overcome the, the power demand of this, of this new technology to maximize range on the car? I don't, I think that the, the purpose of their new computer is to not degrade the range. I don't think it's gonna improve the range. It's not really for range. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to to consume no. more than more than no more no, than, no no it's not going to. no because they specifically designed it so that it can retrofit into my car and your car yes so the new computer will be able to, will be able to get those computers it won't affect anything with the electric so we so the existing Model Three no no car has this chip it needs to be installed right they're actually I think they're starting to put them it's in they're now they're putting them now but the, uh, my car and your car does not no. have it so we need to install it yeah. so uh, that would be an additional cost I assume to install that. Yeah, you know, I think what will happen is, you know, I didn't buy the full, I bought the, the autopilot. autopilot. The autopilot, not the full self-driving. Yeah, so when you when you, when you you pay for that full self-driving, you'll get the computer. You'll that's what, the, the, I suspect yes. that's how they'll do it. So mine, I, I do have the full self the, I do. Oh, you got the autopilot yeah. and the full yeah, self-driving. Oh, so okay. I'm already okay. ready to go. Okay. I'm ready to go, Craig. Okay. <laughs> that's going to be fun. <laughs> okay, guys, here's why uh, Craig is a big, big time electric Israeli follower. So if you have questions, I promise that I will not be able to answer you, but you can put them down and I promise that Craig will answer them for me. Okay. Because he knows the answer. I don't know. Anything. You can ask me about, um, you know, Old Testament. I'm very good at that. But if you have any technical questions uh, about this, put it down in the below in the comments and I will coerce Craig to, <laughs> to answer. He will be happy. He's a great guy. Yeah. He's a nice guy. Nicest person you'll ever meet. Nice guy. We call it in Jewish Hamish. Hamish is a humble person. Mm. So thank you, my my friend. My, my pleasure. Thank you so glad, much. You are awesome interview. <laughs> awesome, awesome interview. Uh, <laughs> um, and that's it, guys. So subscribe to my channel. Help us. Yeah. Change the world one electric car at a time. Yeah. And uh, if you want uh, us to do another video about this stuff that I'm not an expert, uh, I only look for, always look for reasons to hang out with Craig. So you can ask us and we'll be happy to do a follow up mm. on anything you want. Computers, he knows, not me. Thank you guys. 
See you tomorrow with another video.